all shy. Hey, chick, 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 chicks. I don't have any treats for them right now. I looked for properties for a long time, for almost a year. As soon as I found this one, it was instantly went to the top of my wish list. The place is 42 acres, and it was just 42 acres of almost untouched land. I was born and raised in the city. Um, it was my home for 18 years. I'm almost a plumber. I'm a plumbing apprentice right now. I work for a geothermal company out of Dunray Paradise Geothermal. So Rob and I met at the Brandon Folk Festival. I'm not sure how much time he had spent thinking about it before he moved out here. It, it's definitely interesting and challenging. And and I, I do think that uh, the lifestyle intrigued him. Okay, so this is our so finished solar heater. You can see the window screen, black aluminum window screen. If you had this attached to a shed or chicken coop, say, this would be your free heater. I never gave an actual thought to living off the grid before I met Jen. Well, my name is Rob Kettle and I am, I grew up in Pine River, Manitoba. I have been trucking for, oh, how long now? Since I was 22. I was usually on the road for 20 days at a time. Sometimes I'd be out for a month, month and a half. Well, I've been doing truck driving in the oil field for two years now. And yeah, no, I haul water to fracks mostly. Um, it is a conflict, working in the oil field and living this lifestyle. <laughs> the sun powers our house. Um, we have four solar panels for the house and one for the bathroom and and a set of batteries and an inverter and a charge controller, <laughs> a bunch of electrical equipment and it, uh, it runs together and our house is powered off normal 120 volt AC power. Uh, there's nothing like a long day, after a long day of work, sitting back and smoking your own tobacco, drinking your own beer that you've made and Sitting by a wood fire, wood fire that you've cut all the wood for, and yeah. This is the the old woodshed. This side here. And this is what we had filled, and when it was filled to the brim, it would be enough for a season if it was a good season, and if it was good wood. Uh, we built the extension on it this year, this summer. So I'm pretty comfortable that we're going to have enough wood this year. Uh, it's sort of funny, when regular people go grocery shopping, they go down to the supermarket. For us, it's we go down to the root cellar and pick things off the shelf that we've either produced ourselves, made ourselves, canned ourselves. Hey, babe. Hello. Mwah. What are you making? Scalloped potatoes allergenica. Scalloped potatoes? Kind of. Ooh. Well, the concept is a dream that everyone wants to, yeah, everyone wants to be free of the constraints of normal society, I guess. Well, okay, people like me do, anyways. Be up before sunny. It's better to be the last of the morning. There's chores to do in the skies are green. 
So we better be up and on now Yeah, we better be up and on Now we I mean, we are reliant on fossil fuels for everything that we do, and fossil fuels are inherently a dirty technology. I do live off the grid. I'm environmentally conscious of whatever I do, but here I am working in the oil field. It is a necessary evil, but I don't have to like that evil. But then again, I am part of that evil. But then again, if I don't have that job, if I don't work that job, I'll have to go do something else. And frankly, I'm really good at driving truck. Fracking in and of itself is not that bad. Our complete reliance on fossil fuels, on the other hand, is going to be the end of us. I wake up and go to work, and I work in one of the dirtiest industries, quote unquote, they say it's one of the dirtiest known to man, but then I can come home and I basically live my life the way I want to live it. Free, green, and I'm not hurting myself or the land around me. I don't have to worry about that. And that's a big part right there. Thank God, every time I come back here, <laughs> that it's nice and quiet. No, no busy streets, no busy sidewalks, just, yeah, stress-free. Living in the city, you're always paying one bill, then another bill, then a third bill, all just to keep yourself alive every month. Um, you gotta pay for your hydro. You gotta pay for your water, you have to pay for your rent, you have to pay for your mortgage, whatever it may be. And then you're always trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's interesting because having to think about those things, having to think about how much water I use and, and how much power I use, I think, I think is really valuable. I think that's something that everyone should think about. Um, where the water goes once it goes down the drain, what, what happens to it, and those are all things that when you're off the grid in particular, but even just everyone in the country, is something that they have to deal with on their own, um, where their water's coming from and where their water's going. And that's something when you live in a city you don't think about at all. A lot of people, it, it's a thought that has never crossed their minds, but I think it's an important thought. I think it's something that everyone should think about. If you're living in the city, and you think you can't do these things, it's easy. Get out, go to the country. Buy yourself a nice little, a nice little piece of land. It doesn't have to be much. Yeah, you know, it's really easy to point your finger at the big oil company or the big chemical company, but true environmentalism actually starts at home. <laughs> <laughs>